it's a little bit cliche and boring to start off a talk about technology and communication by saying, this is the phone that I used when I grew up. So let's just ignore the fact that it was, in fact, exactly like this in my house growing up. And it was very satisfying when you had an angry hang up to be able to do that. And you can't do that anymore. But uh, let's uh, let's move past that little cliche introduction. And let's fast forward a little bit to uh, just for a reference point, the, the year that I started teaching online, which was 2006. Let's take a look at technology then in 2006 and see where we were at. Obviously, we've come a long way since that old rotary wall hanging phone, right? If you were in 2006 and you had a cell phone, it probably looked something like this. It was probably a flip phone. This was the new advanced Razor phone that was out at that time. And it was really fancy, really cool. It had really good images, as you can tell there. Uh, or if you were super cool, you might have had the LG Chocolate, which was had that slide function. Also very cool, right? You would have had one of these because smartphones did not exist at that time. Literally, they'd not been invented yet. The iPhone, the first iPhone would come out in 2007. So even in 2006, technology was very, very different. Um, you would have had Facebook. It probably would have looked like this. And at that time, you would have had to hand an, a .edu email address to sign up for it. It wasn't just open to the public. You had to have an educational email address because it was limited to just students or people with a .edu address. Uh, in fact, most of the time, um, at that time, you would have been most more likely, if not as likely, to have had a MySpace page instead, if anybody remembers MySpace. And just the Internet speeds. This is just an example of 2007 to 2017. This is the change in Internet speeds over just that 10-year period, right? Um, imagine where we're at today and how that has continued to increase. So it's not difficult to see that technology has changed over time, right? The technology involved in communication has changed. We've come a long way since uh, cave paintings and carrier pigeons, and even a long way since 2006 and using flip phones and and uh, and uh, MySpace, right? So technology is a massive part of communication uh, today, and a massive part of the way that we communicate today. So we want to spend a little bit of time talking about technology and communication and the impact that it has and some considerations that we mean, need to think about as we uh, incorporate technology more and more into our communication lives. So let's start off by talking about what we mean and where all this intersects. We have what we call EMC. Sometimes it's called CMC. EMC stands for electronically mediated communication. Uh, and uh, our CMC would just then be computer mediated communication. They both reference the same thing, but, but I tend to use EMC. So what is EMC? It's very simply communication that occurs through the medium of an electronic device. Medium is just another word for channel. So it's a method through which we communicate. It's the how we're communicating. So EMC or CMC is really any communication that would occur through the use of an electronic device or a computer device in CMC. So it's as broad as that. And, and obviously it's, it's a huge factor today because we communicate electronically probably almost as much as we do face to face, right? So there are some things we need to consider and things we need to keep in mind about using mediated communication. First and foremost, there are different types, right? Even though we, we broadly classified as electronically mediated communication, there are really different types there. You know, it's a little different when we're communicating with a phone as opposed to our computer or a, you know, a camera maybe even, or um, using a TV. Now we can broadcast through YouTube and on TV. So, so there's all kinds of different ways and they all have different features, different advantages, different disadvantages. So we need to keep that in mind as we're using different types of, of electronically mediated communication, that there will be different positives and negatives that go along with that, different um, opportunities and different challenges with each different type. So they also bring with them different considerations. EMC in general and diff the different types of mediated communication in particular bring with them different considerations. One of the first ones is what we call leanness. Um, there's a you know philosophy in communication that says, is this channel rich or channel lean? Channel rich are things like face-to-face -face communication because we have access to all the different channels, not just my words, right? But you have access to the tone of my voice, my facial expressions, my gestures, even the context of the environment in which it's taking place. You have access to all of this and can factor all of that into your interpretation of that message, right? It all gives you different clues as to what that person means and why they're saying it and, and what implications that might have for them and for you. And it's just all kinds of, uh, of data points that you can use to, um, to, to interpret more accurately that communication. And so face to face communication is the most channel rich that we can really get because we have access to all those different data points. You scale it back a little bit when you're talking about something like a video call or, or communicating over zoom, 
You still have access to their words and their tone of voice and maybe their facial expressions, but you may not be able to see their total environment. You're not seeing my environment right now. I'm using a green screen. So this is not what's actually behind me. I'm controlling different aspects of that. You can't see anything outside of this box, right? So, um, so you're not seeing everything, but you're seeing more than you would in some other contexts. So it's still you know, on the, on the scale of channel lean to channel rich. It's relatively rich. This type of communication is. You, you get to the telephone and again, you, you're pulling back a few more channels. So it's more channel lean. You have the words, you have the tone of voice and things like that, but you can't see their facial expressions. You can't see whether or not they're doing the dishes while they're talking to you. You can't see all these other aspects. So it's more lean than, for example, a video call or face to face conversation. And then when you get down to text or email, things like that, you really are limited to mostly just the language or just the words, right? Um, you, you may have some ways that we try and substitute some nonverbal indicators in there through emojis or through, you know, using all caps to sh indicate shouting or something like that. But for the most part, it's, it's much, much more lean, for example, than a face to face conversation, a video call, even a telephone call. So it's more on the channel lean. So we need to keep in mind, depending on what kind of, uh, of mediated communication we may be using, what kind of electronic device or EMC we're using. There could be variances in the leanness involved there, and that may, you know, make a difference in how we how we phrase something. I'm, for example, very sarcastic, so that does not communicate well over text or or email unless you know me really well and kind of have that have my voice in your head being sarcastic. So I need to be aware of that when I'm texting or emailing with somebody that doesn't know me really really well. I need to pull back on the sarcasm meter here a little bit and and uh, be a little more straightforward and consider my language differently in that constant in that context than I would uh, in uh, like a face to face conversation or even a conversation with a different person. So um, different types of EMC have different elements of leanness to them. We also need to keep in mind that many aspects of EMC tend to be asynchronous. Many types of EMC tend to be asynchronous, by which we mean they are not taking place in real time. So it could be that you're sending a message now, but the other person's not reading it or maybe not focusing on it for hours or days or however long later, right? It's not going to be an immediate response if I'm texting or emailing somebody necessarily. Now, we may expect that. We may look for those little dots that show up that show the person is responding or whatever, but those are asynchronous forms of communication. So we may need to be a little patient. And if we have a message that needs synchronous response or synchronous communication, then we need to choose a different channel. We need to choose something other than texting or emailing. If we think that's not going to be fast enough or not going to uh, give us the, what we need from that. So we need to be aware of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, variances in uh, synchron synchronicity for the different channels of EMC as well. We also need to remember permanence. Once we send something electronically, there's a potential that it's out there forever. Uh, my mom always said, even when I was a kid and we didn't have all this, she said, if you don't want somebody to read it, then don't write it down. And that's very much true in today's day and age. If you write something in an email, in a text, or if you put something on a video and put it out there in the world or a, a photo, there's the potential that it will be out there forever. So consider that before you send that nasty comment in an email at, to your work colleague or to, you know, just post something nasty on, on social media or something potentially argumentative on social media. It's not to say that you shouldn't have the freedom to express yourself, but there can be consequences that come with freedom of expression, right? Um, so just to give you an example, um, this is a meme you may have seen. I don't know. It's, it's out around Christmas time usually. And, and we see this occasionally. And the, the reason I bring it up here is that I actually know this person. I know the person in this picture. And uh, so I can tell you a little backstory behind this. This is not what he looks like real. I mean, it is him, but it's not, he doesn't, he doesn't look like this on a regular basis. This was a, an image that he put together for some goofy Christmas cards that he and some friends of ours wanted to put together and send out uh, years ago. And uh, so they got dressed up. He doesn't have, he doesn't, he, none of this is really who he is. I mean, this, this is a creepy picture. This, this is objectively weird, right? And creepy. And you, you're thinking, then this guy's got some issues. I promise you, he doesn't. It's just a picture and it was fun, but he put it on his Facebook page again, like a hundred years ago when Facebook was fairly new, but somebody grabbed it, turned it into a meme. And now it's out there all the time. If you do a search for creepy Christmas cat guy, I imagine you'll find this come up very early in the image results. So um, he put it out through that and now it's out there forever. And, and it doesn't really impact him a great deal because this does not look like him really today at all. Again, he doesn't dress like this. He doesn't really look like this in real life. So he's not really recognizable unless you know him. But 
but that's not true for everybody. If you, when, when you put an image, when you put a post, when you put a comment out there in the world on, on, in an electronic form, the potential is there that it will be there forever. So we need to be aware of that and keep that idea of permanence in mind. So that's true for all types of mediated communication, whether it's texting or emailing or, or whatever. Um, but there are also some, you know, we could narrow it down more specifically to social media a little bit. And we need to think about social media as well as communicators. And just a couple of things I wanted to identify here for you as we think about social media. Um, first of all, when it comes to social media, we also need to keep relational quality in mind. Just because we have a lot of something doesn't mean that it's best, right? Or that it's the most unique. So just because we have a lot of friends or a lot of followers, or we put a lot of content out on social media, or we, we produce a lot of words, doesn't mean that it's good stuff, right? Doesn't mean those are quality relationships. And doesn't mean that, that we're just because we communicate a lot with somebody doesn't mean we're necessarily increasing the, the relational quality of that particular relationship either. So we need to, to be conscientious of both. Um, quant there's nothing wrong with quantity, but we also need to be conscientious of developing the quality in that relationship, of the, developing quality relationships and make sure that social media doesn't uh, distort our view of what that means and, th and that we continue to focus on relational quality. Then. We also need to remember that social media, just like any other kind of communication, requires communicating competently or if you remember from a previous video we talked about communication competence uh, it boils down to essentially communicating appropriately and effectively so when we communicate appropriately and effectively then then we have communication competence okay so in social media there are a couple things that, that will help us uh, gear toward communication competence um, first is to be careful what you post again uh, when you put a comment out there, it's potentially there forever, that idea of permanence. So, so be cautious, be careful what we post and certainly about personal information and things like that. So uh, that could be true in, in the workplace. We don't want to uh, post anything that's going to uh, detract from our professionalism and things like that, but it's also just true in our personal lives because, right? So we want to be careful what we post. We also want to be considerate of others. Um, we need to think about others because again, this is public information uh, to some degree theoretically right social media even if you have it restricted to your friends or just particular people it's still that's that's a public venue enough to, to to involve a lot of other people so we need to be considerate and by that we mean we need to respect others need for an undivided attention so even if we're offline and we're talking to somebody we need to be considerate of being focused on them and not on our phone working on social media or, or hanging on hanging out in social media we need to keep our tone civil in social media. It's not an excuse to, uh, to you know, to, to start lashing out at people just because we're, we're not physically present with them. Be mindful of bystanders, both again, paying attention to people when they're around you in a physical sense, but also be mindful of bystanders. who get caught in the crossfire of this whole social media thing. People get drawn into these things in, in between the social connections. So we need to be mindful of, of them. And then we need to also just, you know, consider that relational quality again, balance our EMC and our FaceTime with people. Don't get so caught up in social media that we, that we do so to the exclusion of these face-to-face -face relationships. We need to be alert for misunderstandings. We know that misunderstandings happen a lot on social media. You may type something one way and somebody reads it in a completely different way uh, and, and they just interpret it in a completely different way. A lot of times, again, it's very channel lean, so they don't have the context and they're not in your brain, so they can't understand exactly. So we need to be very cautious when we post things about how it could potentially be interpreted by other people and, and be aware of that potential um, for misunderstandings. I would also encourage you to have a cool down period when it comes to social media, as far as communication competence. Um, we tend to have a tendency to do the dis disinhibition effect to reply immediately and emotionally without regard to what other impacts that might have. And that doesn't mean you can't express yourself, but we ought to, you know, have a cool down period. Take at least five minutes after you read something that makes you angry and, and bef before you post something make sure that you've considered all the different implications, maybe even sleep on it overnight is always my suggestion. And then if in the morning, if you still feel strongly about posting it, then go ahead. But, uh, but we need to have a cool down period and not just respond reflexively and, and out of an entirely emotional state, um, without really considering the, the, all the consequences of what might result from our own post. Just because somebody else posts something nasty does not give us permission to do so in kind. and doesn't mean there won't be consequences for us. So communication technology is com 
constantly changing, right? It's always changing. It's changed so much as we indicated from when I was a kid through just the time that I started teaching online since 2006. It's almost entirely different now, and it will be 10 years from now. Technology and communication is so integrated into our lives and it changes so rapidly that we absolutely need to keep these considerations in mind and be as competent as we can be in uh, EMC as we are with face-to-face -face communication. If you have questions about technology and communication, where these intersect, the different implications that, that might have, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you via email and, and chat about this some more. Uh, in the meantime, I do hope you will give great consideration to your EMC habits and your communication competence as it relates to electronically mediated communication. And, uh, and just be mindful of that as we move forward, because it is a part of the entire package of competent communication.